Covert Information Warfare, busted. With this section of the course, we are about to enter the information operation world. Today we will learn how to distinguish between propaganda, disinformation, information warfare, and hostile information influencing. Then, we shall get on board for a very difficult mission. Together, we will learn how to spot disinformation, expose information warfare tactics, and last but not least, we will learn together how to counter them. Finally, we shall put on our analyst spectacles and hat and go on a mission to expose information operations and their modus operandi. Stay tuned and don't abort the mission. Propaganda. Propaganda represents the intensive manipulation of information so as to influence perceptions and the ability of the target audience to make objective decisions. The overall aim of propaganda is to obtain strategic advantages, political and financial capital, brand and image promotion, etc. Nowadays, threats generated by propaganda and disinformation are predominantly circulated and made effective by exploiting the systematic vulnerabilities of the digital ecosystem. Disinformation. Disinformation refers to an entire array of tactics and strategies used to propagate false, inexact, or out-of-context information, therefore hijacked from their real meaning. Its intention is to provoke damages and or profit. Continuous disinformation can severely affect democratic processes, national security, and social cohesion. In the long run, it undermines citizens' trust in legitimate authorities, the democratic system, and the benefits of the information society, thus diminishing citizens' permeability to information, knowledge, and progress. Propaganda versus disinformation. Experts also separate conventional propaganda from disinformation by making reference to the source. If propaganda is accomplished via state institutions, state-owned TV and radio channels, media outlets, government-affiliated press and news portals, whose ties are theoretically easily traceable, disinformation operations take a great deal of effort in covering primary sources, while information operations remain, at least partially, clandestine. According to L. John Martin, Disinformation, hence, represents a form of propaganda whose main purpose remains illegal and clandestine, the message it puts forth being an intentionally manipulated account of a real situation or of a legitimate action carried out by an entity perceived as an opponent. Disinformation includes a series of practices such as counterfeited documents, fake news, gray or black propaganda, foreign media source manipulation, or control operations carried out by agents of influence, radio stations, TV channels, sites, blogs, clandestine social media accounts, the use of non-governmental associations, political parties with kindred ideologies, protest manipulation or setting up, and, in extremis, blackmail and kidnapping. Hostile Information Operations a hostile information operation can be defined as the array of covert or semi-covert actions that make disinformation possible and enhance its effectiveness. They include a systematic and concerted use of tactics such as counterfeiting documents, falsifying evidence, manipulating facts, and accounting events erroneously. The so-called troll farms, shadow news monitoring institutions where employees use skills to falsify information and induce opinionated and partisan beliefs in the readers, generate and replicate conspiration theories that undermine the target's credibility and legitimacy, etc. Information Warfare Hostile information operations are, in their turn, a constitutive part of the information warfare, which can be defined by Jessica Aro as a state-conducted strategic series of information and psychological operations that influences the target's opinions, attitudes, and actions in order to support the political goals of the state's leaders. Fake News As Marwick and Lewis wrote in 2017, fake news remains a rather contested term due to its lack of conceptual clarity. It generally refers to a wide range of disinformation and misinformation circulating online and in the media. Other researchers have defined it as any story that is fabricated in its entirety or in part and is then circulated via social media in order to influence public perception and or gain and then profit from users' attention. Identifying and exposing hostile information influencing. While identifying hostile information influencing may have been the appanage of professional journalism and the state, with the advent of social media, 
it becomes more and more imperative for all social media content producers and consumers to be able to both spot and expose hostile information influencing. Disinformation is successful, especially when the following criteria are met. For a disinformation message to succeed, it needs to present information that is not true, or at least not entirely true, but that is plausible and could be true and with a long-term effect. Secondly, it most of the times makes use of pseudoscience and presents so-called facts and figures that are difficult to verify. Last but not least, in order to work, the disinformation message is created so as not to compromise its primary source. Countering disinformation can be done by appealing to the message. When attempting to counter the effect of disinformation, one must first focus on the message and expose any error of logic that it's based on. Secondly, any facts or figures used as arguments should be verified and exposed if false. The source. Most often, the primary source of disinformation remains hidden as the information is rolled through different fake news sites, blogs, and social media accounts. Exposing the primary source, that is most of the times either obscure or already known for disinformation, is a useful step forward. Also exposing the way propaganda and disinformation works can help the public better understand and become resilient to further disinformation. Identifying and exposing hostile information influencing, however, may need more than the intervention of professional state institutions and NGOs dedicated to exposing falsified content. In order to identify and expose hostile information influencing, we therefore need to take into consideration an entire array of actions. Action 1. Expose information operations and their modus operandi through media, democracy watchdog civil society organizations, academic research, etc. First, there is the obvious solution of exposing hostile information operations' current modus operandi and keeping a close eye on any new developments so that the public can be timely made aware of their existence. This requires a good understanding of current tactics and continuous resources being invested in researching the topic. But let us refer to the current modus operandi and what we should know about how disinformation and hostile information operations work. Researcher Jessica Aro provides a good example into how Russian propaganda, for instance, has impacted the Finnish online environment by the following strategy. Creating tailor-made content. Narratives invoke fake claims and are meant to generate strong emotions like fear, anger, hate, but also national pride. Memes, caricatures, digitally altered images, and videos are used to create visual attraction. Publishing disinformation material first on dedicated media outlets, sites, social media accounts, and then rolling them through less obvious propaganda sites and blogs. VK, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and blogs. Silencing down honest commentators, aggressive trolls that don't share the central message they want to convey. Bullying and blocking comments by troll group administrators to silence down opposition and forge unanimity of belief in the group providing a constellation of channels for propaganda dissemination through the self-entitled alternative media sites and blogs, allegedly citizen-sourced. Generating privacy breaches and then using them to smear the reputation of those that oppose information operations. Carrying out black PR campaigns and social media stalking on denouncers of propaganda through trolls. Action 2. Promote the use of reliable fact-checking organizations. EU versus Disinformation, Stop Fake, Vox Check Ukraine, and Data Commons are examples of fact-checking initiatives that are meant to provide accurate information with relation to how a story was falsified and what is the source of propaganda and disinformation. According to its official site, EU versus Disinfo, for instance, has a record of 7,306 pro-Kremlin disinformation cases collected and debunked that can easily be accessed in its database you can check the references below the video. Action 3. Encourage the use of plugins that make fact-checking globally available. Another seemingly effective action consists of building platforms that expose echo chambers and divert interest of citizens from propaganda and disinformation narratives. This has already been attempted as a service to actually let ordinary users detect fakes easily 
As Hinchcliffe wrote in Exposing Echo Chambers to Eradicate the Plague of Propaganda in 2020. Fake's killer plug-in, for instance, identifies fake stories in the news feed and thus helps counter the effect of echo chambers in which people get as a result of accessing only content of like-minded people by using algorithms that filter information according to your likes and dislikes. Facebook, for example, creates echo chambers in which a network of like-minded people share controversial theories, biased views, and selective news, quoted by Hinchcliffe in the same reference mentioned before. Plugins like Fakes Killer help not only detecting content of propaganda and disinformation operations, but also aims to bring fact checkers together, uses content produced only by verified and well established fact checkers, and provides them a platform to expose fake fact checking organizations. Action 4 Involve social media platforms and tech companies to take consistent action to timely identify and ban disinformation spreading accounts. In September 2018, a group of online platforms, social networks, advertisers, and advertising industry bodies brought together by the European Commission agreed upon a self-regulatory code of practice on disinformation to address the spread of online disinformation and fake news. According to the European Commission, the code includes an annex identifying best practices that signatories will apply to implement the code's commitments. The code of practice has been signed by Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Mozilla, as well as by advertisers and the advertising industry in October 2018, and signatories presented their roadmaps to implement the code. In May 2019, Microsoft subscribed to the code of practice and also presented its roadmap. Action 5. Empower citizens to understand, check, and contribute to the grassroots movement of fighting propaganda and disinformation. RAND Corporation provides an entire database of tools that fight disinformation. There are a number of tools that allow citizens to better their skills in self-protection against disinformation operations and in exposing fake content online. These include video games that expose players to fake news tactics, platforms developed to detect and track troll bots, collaborative checking, gamified formats that build skills in identifying false information, and digital image forensics tools that allow for clone detection.